Namaskaram everyone. Fetal circulation is a very very important topic for pediatrics theory examination. It has several practical applications as well. So in this video we shall know about it. So let us start by revising the normal circulation in an adult heart. Please stay with the dots which will show the circulation. The blood moves from the inferior vena cava to the right atrium as also from the superior vena cava to the right atrium. Thereafter the blood moves into the right ventricle, from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery and from the pulmonary artery it goes to the lungs where it gets oxygenated. This oxygenated blood enters the heart back again from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. From the left atrium it moves to the left ventricle and from the left ventricle it shall move into the aorta from where it shall be supplied to. So in a way if we see a diagrammatic representation of the adult cardiac circulation we will see that the blood moves into the right atrium from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava that is the systemic venous circulation. From there it moves into the right ventricle, from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. The mm, blood in the pulmonary artery is then carried to the lungs where it gets oxygenated and this blood is returned back to the heart via the pulmonary veins which open into the left atrium. Blood then moves from the left atrium into the left ventricle and thereafter into the aorta and from the aorta the blood is supplied to the body and once again the deoxygenated blood is collected from the systemic circulation and moved back into the right atrium through the two uh, big veins that is the superior and the inferior vena cava. So if you see clearly then you will find that the circulation in an adult human being is in series. But if we see the circulation in a fetal heart, then we'll see that in a fetal heart, the lungs are not there and gas exchange occurs in the, in the maternal placenta. Oxygenated blood is carried from the placenta through the umbilical vein. 50% of this blood goes to the liver and another 50% goes from the ductus venosus that is this shunted from the umbilical vein into the inferior vena cava through the ductus venosus. This inferior vena cava opens into the right atrium. The superior vena cava also opens into the right atrium but the inferior vena cava carries blood from the lower limb and the umbilical vein and it enters the right atrium preferentially being directed by a flap of tissue across the foramen ovale into the left atrium. Blood from superior vena cava preferentially goes to the pulmonary artery but pulmonary artery being vasoconstricted in the neonatal period because the lungs are non-functional, 95% of this blood is shunted into the descending aorta via the ductus arteriosus and this blood in the descending aorta perfuses the lower part of the fetus and also goes to the placenta via the two umbilical arteries. Mixed blood from the inferior vena cava is shunted to left atrium and then goes to the left ventricle supplying mainly the upper part of the fetal body and the brain. So in this case you see that the circulation is mainly in parallel. That is as the blood moves into the right atrium it will also go into the left atrium. As the blood moves into the pulmonary artery it will also go into the systemic artery or the aorta that is the descending aorta. So in short there are three shunts in fetal life as you will see more clearly in this diagram. In the fetal circulation the blood arrives from the placenta via the umbilical vein. This is the oxygenated blood is depicted in red color. The ductus venosus shunts oxygenated blood from the placenta away from the semifunctional liver and towards the heart. In the next diagram we see the second major part of the fetal circulation that is the heart. The oxygenated blood from the placenta enters the right atrium via the inferior vena cava. 
The foramen ovale allows the oxygenated blood in the right atrium to reach the left atrium. Foramen ovale is the second shunt. And the ductus arteriosus connects the aorta with the pulmonary artery, further shunting blood away from the lungs and into the aorta. So ductus arteriosus is the third shunt. So first shunt is ductus venosus, second is foramen ovale and third is ductus arteriosus. Mixed blood then travels to the head and body and back to the placenta via the descending aorta via the umbilical arteries. So there are once you have understood that what fetal circulation actually is you must write the following percentages in your answer that is blood from the umbilical vein is carried 50% to the liver and 50% of it opens into the inferior vena cava via the ductus venosus. Inferior vena cava in turn actually carries poorly oxygenated blood from the lower half of the body. The pulmonary artery constitutes 5% of the right ventricular outflow in the fetal life. Descending aorta constitutes 10% of the left ventricular outflow. The descending aortic blood flow of the descending aortic blood flow, 65% is returned to the placenta and 35% perfuses the fetal tissues and organs. These are the partial pressures of oxygen and SpO2 values in different blood vessels and chambers of the heart in fetal life. In umbilical vein, the SpO2 is maximum that is 80% uh, and uh, the PO2 is 30 to 35. The blood which is carried in the inferior vena cava which carries blood from lower body to umbilical vein and umbilical vein and it is shunted directly from the right atrium to the left atrium via the foramen ovale has an SpO2 of around 70% and PO2 of 26 to 28. So the blood in the left atrium has a PO2 of 26 to 28 and an SpO2 of around 60% as also carried to some amount which is carried from the pulmonary veins. The superior vena cava which is the primary source of the right ventricular outflow and uh, to the upper part uh, carrying blood from the upper part of the body has a PO2 of 12 to 14 millimeters mercury and an SPO2 50 to 55 and the descending aorta has a PO2 of 20 to 22 and SPO2 55 to 60 percent respectively. Now during transition from the fetal to the neonatal life, there are two major events which occur. The first thing is that the baby cries at birth. The baby cry at birth leads to mechanical expansion of the lungs, increase in arterial PO2 and a rapid decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance. The second event is we clamp the cord. This leads to removal of low resistance placental circulation and an increase in systemic vascular resistance. Because of these two things, there are three consequences. The first is a decrease in pulmonary vascular resistance which leads to shunt reversal from left to right in the ductus arteriosus which eventually closes later due to high PO2 forming the ligamentum arteriosum. Second is increased volume of pulmonary blood flow returning to the left atrium leading to functional closure of valve of foramen ovale, the eustachian valve of foramen ovale. And third is the removal of placenta and cord clamping which leads to closure of ductus venosus which eventually becomes the ligamentum venosum later in life. Now in the neonate, the left ventricle which in the fetus pumped only blood only to the upper part of the body and brain must now deliver the entire systemic cardiac output which is around 350 ml per kg per minute which is almost 200 increase in output. So this is achieved by a combination of hormonal and metabolic signals including an upsurge in catecholamines and increase in density of myocardial beta adrenergic receptors. The ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale do not close completely at birth and may remain patent in certain car congenital cardiac lesions. So these can be beneficial and they can be harmful as well. They can be life-saving to bypass a congenital cardiac defect, for example, PDA in pulmonary atresia or coarctation of aorta or foramen ovale in transposition of great vessels. Or they can present an additional stress to the circulation, for example, PDA in a premature infant. So we need to administer pharmacotherapy to maintain the patency of these two shunts, these shunts or uh, force closure of these shunts as and when required. 
so if we want to maintain the patency to bypass a congenital defect then in that case we administer prostaglandin e1 infusion and if we want to close it for example if it is presenting as a hemodynamic stress to a premature infant then we use endomethacin the largest decline in pulmonary vascular resistance in the neonate occurs within the first 2 to 3 days but it may be prolonged for 7 days or more normally also and uh, if it is patho physiolo uh, it is uh, pathological then in that case it is referred to as persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn so functional closure of ductus arteriosus occurs at 12 to 24 hours of birth and anatomical closure usually by 2 to 3 weeks of birth foramen ovale closes functionally at birth but anatomically it closes by 6 months of age and ductus venosus closes within minutes of birth and anatomical closure usually takes place within 3 to 7 days to remember it we say a mnemonic wow wow is v a o which is the order of closure of the three shunts v is ductus venosus closes by approximately 1 week a is ductus arteriosus closes by approximately 3 weeks and o is foramen ovale closes by approximately 3 to 6 months of fetal uh, this neonatal age infant age so the main difference between the fetal and the um, postnatal circulation which we can summarize are as follows placental circulation is present in the fetus which provides gas exchange for the fetus lungs and fetus are non functional and this results in very little pulmonary venous return to the left atrium and there are three shunts present in present in the fetal life these are ductus venosus between the umbilical vein and the inferior vena cava foramen ovale between the right atrium and the left atrium and ductus arteriosus between the pulmonary artery and descending aorta thank you so much for a patient listening uh, thanks a lot